Today I want to share a few ways to get gold early on in Oblivion. At high level things are a little different and you won't necessarily use all of these techniques though you will probably still use some of them but the whole point of this video is that you're not at that level yet and you want to just start making some gold right now. I'll start off with the laziest one which is basically just to join guilds and sell their stuff. Now what do I mean by that? There are basically guilds in the game, you've probably seen them already, and in particular the Fighters Guild and the Mages Guild allow you to join very easily just by going to the guild and having a conversation. Then once you've joined, everything within those buildings essentially becomes yours. So you can literally just go and pick up the items off the shelves. Some of them are fairly valuable, especially when you're very early on in the game, that gold can actually make quite a big difference. So you can just grab these items, and in some cases, as you can see here, you can literally sell it back to them in the same building. <laughs> it's a bit ridiculous, but it's an insanely easy way to make some gold to get you started. Now we're not talking thousands and thousands, but there's a few hundred gold in there easily, and it's just an extremely easy way to get it early on. You can also do this as part of the main quest when you join the blades. So when you go to Cloud Ruler Temple, there's actually a bunch of stuff over there that you can just loot and then just go and vendor immediately afterwards. Number two requires a little more effort, but not a lot more effort to be honest. This is guild based again, but this time we're talking about the Thieves Guild. Once you join the Thieves Guild, and I've actually got a video that shows you how to join the Thieves Guild, if you want to see that I'll link it in the description down below. But once you've joined, you're basically able to go around shops at night or people's houses at night, break in, steal their stuff and then sell it to a fence. The fence is why you need to join the Thieves Guild because that's how you offload the stolen goods. A good place to go is the market district in the Imperial City. And the best things to steal are basically items that are low weight and high in value. So you're talking jewellery, potions, ingredients, books, spell tomes, that kind of thing. So look for those shops within the market district. They're all over the place. They're pretty obvious. Have a look around at the different shops. And you can actually go in in the day and have a look at the sort of weight to value ratio of the items before you go in at night to steal them. Again, it's not massive money, but it will get you a few hundred to a few thousand, depending on how far you take your crime spree. And that's going to be really useful early on. Just don't get caught, obviously. The third thing you can do is head over to the arena, again in the Imperial City, and sign up to fight there. For every victory in the arena, you are given an amount of gold, and it starts at 50 gold per match, and it goes up to 500 gold per match. The matches do get progressively harder, so there's going to be a limit on how far you can go, depending on the current stats and gear that you have. But the good thing is these fights are literally spammable, so between the hours of 9am and 9pm when the arena's open, you can just go in and just fight back to back and, and get that gold really quickly. Number four, you could join the Dark Brotherhood and do the quests there. Essentially, the Dark Brotherhood will give you assassination contracts, and when you fulfill them, you'll be rewarded with gold, or at least an item that can be exchanged for gold. And in my opinion, these are some of the best quests that the game has to offer anyway, so it's really no chore completing them. A bit like the Thieves Guild, joining the Dark Brotherhood does involve a number of different steps that aren't necessarily obvious, especially if you haven't played before. And again, I'll refer you to the video that I talked about earlier in which I talk about how to join the different guilds in Oblivion, including the Dark Brotherhood. Again, the video link will be in the description down below. There are also some collection quests that you could quite easily miss, or at least not see the monetary value of. Firstly, you have a quest called The Collector, which essentially gives you money for collecting Aeliad ruin, I think it's how it's pronounced, Aeliad ruins, from, for a guy called um, Umbacano. Sorry about my pronunciation here. But the great thing about this is you actually have 10,000 gold worth of value for doing the entire quest chain. And the places you go to loot these different artifacts are going to offer gold anyway because you're going to be killing monsters and looting treasure chests and whatnot. So you're going to get sort of additional passive income just by going to those places and, and completing the essentially dungeons or delves or whatever we call them in Elder Scrolls. The way this quest starts is you have to get your first Aeliad um, statue and go to an NPC, sell it. Once you do that, a messenger will turn up and give you a note that comes from this Umbacano guy. And it says, go to speak to him, which you do. And then you can immediately basically start beginning collecting for him and getting, I think it's 500 gold per statue. It's a lot anyway. It, it amounts to 10,000 gold after you've done all of them. And much like the Dark Brotherhood quest, it's a fun way of getting gold anyway if you're going to be going to these delves and using your combat skills and exploring. You can't lose, really. Another one is that you can collect vampire dust for a guy called Roland Jenserik. And this is for an organisation that's called the Order of Virtuous Blood. Basically, they'll give you 250 gold per vampire dust, which isn't particularly hard to get if you go to places where there are vampires. Uh, just Google that, there are loads. 
Now, I don't wanna give spoilers for the quest, but there are decision points that will impact how much gold you can make. So if you care about spoilers, I'd at least suggest saving before you start the quest. And if you don't care about spoilers, just Google the quest and it'll tell you exactly what you need to do to make the most gold. And last but not least, you have alchemy, which is arguably the best way of making money at any stage in the game. It's certainly extremely low effort and very efficient. You simply need to turn food into potions and then sell them to the vendor. The only things you need to do it are items that you're going to find for free on your adventures anyway. Again, Google's your friend when it comes to the ins and outs of alchemy. But in this case, you do literally just use the items that you're going to find for free very early in the game. A pestle and mortar is going to get you started, and you can add retorts, uh, calcinators, and alembics to improve the quality of the potions and then sell them for a bit more money. Remember the items that you saw me stealing from the Mage's Guild? Some of those are the items, items that you need for alchemy, so maybe just keep a few of them for yourself rather than selling them all. And sorry, you're not stealing them. You're taking them for free because you're part of the Mage's Guild. It's not our fault that they're idiots and they let us sell them straight back to them. A really good place to get your first batch of ingredients is outside Skingrad, the town. You can go to the one side, and I'll show on the map here, and grab all of the grapes from the Tamika and Cyril vineyards. And then you can go to the opposite side and grab a bunch of tomatoes from the tomato farm over there. Once you've gathered all those ingredients, which is literally the work of a few minutes, you can then combine them to make a whole bunch of fatigue potions and then sell them for several hundred gold. And the prices you can see on the screen now are for each individual potion, not for the whole stack. So early in the game, that actually adds up to quite a bit. And also the grapes and tomatoes do respawn every three days, so you can repeat this. You also find and can steal food from pretty much anywhere. And a really nice thing when you steal it and then turn it into a potion is that it no longer counts as stolen goods. So you don't even need to use a fence to recycle stolen food. It really is just such an easy and an efficient way to make money. Also, using alchemy to make money isn't even limited to the low levels. As you level your skills and get access to higher level reagents, you can actually make even more profit. So there you go. I hope that helps you make some easy gold. If you found the video useful, then consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel. And yeah, see you next time.